Scott Siegel, Helium Foundation. Thanks How are you? Me. Of course. Thank you for thank you for joining us today. Absolutely. How's your conference so far? It's been good. I mean, trying to juggle between the usual, you know, calls into actually listening and enjoying content, mm -hmm. which that differ from any other crypto conference that we are, are at. So. Tell us about Helium. Yeah, we build wireless networks and doing so in a way that flips the traditional model. So um, kind of go back to what like legacy wireless and how they build their networks. It's a very, very capital uh, intensive model where um, these carriers are owning real estate, they're paying operators, they're maintaining radios. Um, and that all comes with significant capex and also the opex that kind of leads on from that. And they're spending tens of billions of dollars, not every single year. And they're charging tens of billions and of dollars every, <laughs> every single year. And the reality is, is that like, it's, it's not scalable. It's not sustainable. You've got underserved urban centers. You've got rural uh, communities that don't have significant coverage, supply lines. Um, and what he really does is flips that model of how do you incentivize the creation of a wireless network where people on the ground can actually build and create that coverage and get rewarded for it. Um, so if you think about, again, like those areas I'm talking about uh, in terms of rural coverage, it doesn't make sense for an AT&T or Verizon to go and deploy there because the return on their investment in those areas isn't there. But the people on the ground who have the contextual understanding of where they need that coverage, mm -hmm. um, not to even mention an industrial side supply lines, they know where that coverage needs to be. And it makes sense to, again, kind of think about how you distribute the, the workload. Not only that, in our town, we don't have cell coverage because nobody wants a cell tower near them. Exactly. So it's been Why not? a decade. Uh, there's uh, really a lot of people are fearful that the towers themselves cause oh, harm. Cause cancer, yeah. and that kind of thing. And kind of so, you know, the, there's a, a plot that was set aside near a school and mm -hmm. the town went crazy. And, shut it down. And so, and that was after 10 years of where are we going to put something? Yeah. Right. And the reality is in towns like that, especially where, I mean, if it's the kind of not in my backyard mentality, like you're still left with your houses, you know, under covered or under served. So as much as with Helium, we're focused on those kind of like commercial deployments, the amount of, you know, the, the tens of thousands of people who just like put one up in their home because, oh, I can have a clear, you know, call. I did. <laughs> <laughs> Tell that story. I have. I heard that I could buy a miner and it cost a thousand dollars at the time. And I oh, it early plug it days. in. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What does it cost plug, now? It was yeah, five years, five years ago, maybe Oh yeah, four yeah. years ago. Anyway, when, and at the time okay. we weren't, uh, our town was not well covered with helium. So I, I had actually a pretty good location mm -hmm. and there could have been a lot of traffic if, if it had worked out. Um, and it may have worked out, but, uh, so I plugged it in, put it on the, on the, roof and watched my money grow well, an yeah. alien token that's funny. That's yes. great so when helium actually i mean just touching on kind of the history when yeah. helium starts so first of all helium was not a blockchain project for its outset it was really solving around um internet of things low power devices and how do you kind of build um, a model where you deploy that on a campus of we want to do better flood detection we want to do air quality so somewhere you know, we're in yukon right now if they want to do indoor yeah iot was why i got it and and even though there aren't factories around, there were other use cases yeah. that I thought were going to come, and I was getting paid for it anyway. So and those networks are even more difficult to build than kind of cellular and five G networks because again, just like the the um, the economic model of those things is hard because the amount of data going through, you're not actually necessarily earning as much as you would on a cell phone plan. But um, but the re, you know so hotspots back then, yeah, it was several hundred dollars for IoT hotspot. You know now you can go buy you know a helium outdoor gateway for five hundred. Indoor is two hundred and fifty, um, and you know helium really expanded from that IoT model where we still have you know like dozens and dozens of fantastic use cases. But where I think we've really taken off in the last you know few years is this expansion to focused on cellular and mobile. Mm -hmm. um, you know, today Helium is serving a million people a day who don't know that Helium even exists. So what I mean by that is the likes of an AT&T. Yeah, you just signed with AT&T, right? We we just announced it recently. So if you're an AT&T subscriber, you could be in the middle of New York City and you're roaming into Helium coverage and you don't know that it even exists, but you're benefiting from the network's existence because you're not dropping a call now. Um, Every one of those Link NYC towers you see around the city, those are also now coded in. Those are Helium access points now. Mm -hmm. So you're picking up the coverage that 
AT&T might drop in some areas of New York City. Yeah. So again, if you think about, you know, we all the, uh, the telcos speak of graduating from 4G to 5G. Right, that's just, it's more data throughput. Like the yeah. demand for data is greater and greater. We all want to stream. We all want to be checking, you know, whatever else. We're all on Twitter every single day. Crypto every Twitter. single day. No matter <laughs> whether you love it or not, yep. um, we're all there. Thank so, goodness. It's crypto coffee shop. Um, <laughs> and because the demand for data grows uh, significantly as you move from 4G to 5G networks, um, you're going to have those gaps in coverage, especially in dense urban areas. So the fact that a bodega can literally throw up and deploy coverage or that a you know multi-chain coffee shop can throw up that coverage, it is solving a problem for the business. It's solving a problem for the carrier. Mm -hmm. um, so again, like this is, I always look at Helium and this is one of the reasons why I got so excited about the project in the first place of, it is kind of a silver bullet of how you get a billion people on chain. You meet people where they are, which everybody has the use case in their pocket. It's a cell phone. Mm -hmm. So... Do you collect revenues directly from entities? For no, coverage? no. So for the foundation, yeah, how does that, how does no. that work? So the foundation, like our goal is again, we're trying to make sure the economic model of Helium is sustainable. So for us, I want to make sure we're, that value accrues to the token in such a way that all of the supply side, which means the the people who are deploying coverage on Helium, that it is in their economic interest to maintain that coverage and to continue deploying. So the more that we're actually driving value because there are commercial entities that are effectively using the helium token to access the network that helps to so that's so at t is is compensating through to helium tokens so if uh, they were compensating you i don't know that they are exceptionally but. yes at t is effectively you know has to use helium tokens to access the yeah. network do they do that with a as a proxy through the uh, through nova labs which runs helium mobile yes but the idea is that like that is still tokens that are being burned to, so like all of our revenue, like it's very much like on-chain revenue. Yeah. It's not that like it's come to foundation. That, we're I, that I was, in, yeah. I meant that, yeah. yeah. What was that process like getting a traditional mobile carrier on board to kind of say, hey, this is what we're doing and this is working? Uh, yeah, so I think blockchain? Like, I mean, the, the reality is, is that like, especially the you know, legacy industry like telco, they wanna see somebody else test and try it first. So while this idea of carrier offload and roaming is I think what's gonna, truly scale Helium significantly um, from an infrastructure perspective, the idea that we launched Helium Mobile as like the network's own native carrier was a way right. to show, oh, this works, that if you actually create and stand up a, a mobile carrier, that it can leverage that connectivity that's provided at, you know, at a ground up level. Mm -hmm. um, so the carrier kind of was like that first kind of use case to kind of go and create those other partnerships of we're running a carrier it works let's show you the quality of service let's show you like where the foot traffic is and the fact that that connectivity is there and live and so kind of use our own ecosystem as the guinea pig to prove it to the to the big guys that's really interesting it is what's the next step along the way what are the next big big projects and targets for you this show is being brought to you by our sponsor truflation Professional investors and economists and probably any casual observers know that government inflation statistics are only an approximation of what real inflation is. Not only that, but the government has a conflict of interest because high inflation can be so damaging to the economy, the deficit, and our $36 trillion in debt. Trueflation collects over 80 million pricing data points. Most are updated daily to reveal inflation with precision for asset managers, governments, companies, and the general public. Check them out at trueflation.com. What are the next big, big projects and targets for you? So, I mean, you know, what's been really fantastic to see is that I think people have picked up that like, this is, this is really unlocking like significant growth of like the value that crypto creates and like how we scale this. So, um, there's a, uh, an organization called Inversion Capital. They are out in, in Santiago has done uh, a number of panels. I mean, the last like three uh, be between, I think he was over at Token in Dubai and then at um, Consensus. And his idea is kind of similar to that of Helium of like, this is how we scale to a billion users on chain of he's going out to shop to go and acquire an existing mobile operator and then use Helium to actually Convert flip it. their model and kind of improve the metrics to say, oh. Well, I can just continue to run a carrier as is, but all of I'm going to abstract away all of my cost saving measures that are actually leveraging helium and deep in, if you will, mm -hmm. um, to bring it to you know the next country. And then for us, we look at again like what are the right partnerships for us internationally outside the U.S. where we can bring in other carriers to say, look, this is where you can have significant cost savings here. Mm -hmm. um, ideally, you pass that on to your customers. It's it's their call whether they do or don't, but truly. 
the idea of how you can bring down that capex on again tower maintenance radio and operator maintenance because you can leverage a network that is there and exists um it really becomes kind of a rinse and repeat at that point of how we continue to scale globally mm. how many nodes do you have and um so include i mean if you include the the iot nodes with mobile i mean it is you know several hundred thousand um as far as net new coverage on the mobile side in the us i think it's just around a hundred thousand now uh, but one of the things that we've been able to do is go towards some of these like large arenas or large shopping malls and say, you already have an existing, like you already have a Wi-Fi network in here. We can convert this to be helium compatible. And now you're going to have seamless roaming where, you know, if you think you're in a mall, like, oh, I got to find the Wi-Fi, yeah. what's the SSID? What's Dead the zones everywhere. And you're trying to like find the network to get on. And it's a very, it's, it's a process that's filled with friction. Mm -hmm. But if you were able to walk in that same shopping mall and now you just actively roam with your carrier, that's a much better experience for somebody like Simon Properties owning, you know, whatever, I think the most number of malls in the United States. So we're able to go to these venues and actually take their existing fleet of harbor that's already out. So there's no new install. There's no new operational cost. We're just flipping these things to be helium compatible and support better, clear offload. Um, so again, the link into my sea towers in Manhattan, um, do this indoors malls, sports arenas, um, all these types of places where instead of deploying new hardware, we can just convert existing fleets. Mm -hmm. We've had some really good guests on today with real world use cases, right? Yeah. And what's interesting to me as someone who covers policy is how you're thinking about what's going on in Washington at the moment. Um, oh, constantly. Constantly, yeah. yeah I think <laughs> that, um, that it's, it's really important because we we want to make sure that there is, you know, a lot of the kind of conversations in DC, certainly on you know, the stable coin legislation, there's a lot of stuff around financial yeah. applications, but with respect to the market structure bill and whether it fit 21 or I, I think the Lummis bills kind of not have too much oxygen left, but regardless of what form it takes, the making sure the rules for deep in are clear mm -hmm. in terms of that these things that you know tokens being used to incentivize the deployment of physical infrastructure are not going to be mistakenly classified as investment contracts so right. we're engaging on one side of it is the legislation on like let's make sure the rules of the road are clear so all these other companies and protocols that are building these types of solutions can scale on shore. We want to keep the innovation in the U S mm -hmm. beyond that it's engaging with groups like, you know, NTIA FCC of like, there are farm bills with large you know, government grants towards rural connectivity. Those dollars were not well used right. like, regardless of your politics. Like the dollars weren't put to good use. If we can get that in the right communities and in the right agencies and organizations say, leverage our model and we can help do this at a lower cost to actually make sure these communities are connected like that's a net win for everybody mm -hmm. um last thing on the on the federal side the um hurricanes last year in the carolinas working directly with a veterans group we were able to get on the ground where towers had been knocked over power was out and we were creating wireless coverage like on the spot so it was a pickup truck a solar um Solar energy, uh, I think wow. we're using Starlink backhaul, and then Helium was getting all the phones in that area connected. So again, like working with these government orders, like we can do this stuff. So oh, it's, we're, we're solving it's problems. It's worth repeating. Talk about these devices and why it's so quick and how expensive they are and what yep. they do. So uh, again, anybody, if you, you don't have great coverage, whether it's your business, whether it's, you know, your downtown business improvement districts, um, you know, the indoor hotspot is, so go to helium.com. Uh, <laughs> Here's the plug. <laughs> 200, 250 for an indoor hotspot to $500 uh, for an outdoor hotspot. We actually are running a, uh, a large coverage grant at the moment. So again, to help drive a lot of the um, deployments, anybody who is deploying over 25 uh, net new um, coverage nodes, we are helping with the cost around that. Again, all the details are, are on the website, but yeah, again, you they, don't have to be a very technically minded, like a Bitcoin miner to be able to do this. Other no. people who do this are just, you know, they're coffee shop owners sometimes. Mm -hmm. And the signal just picks up from when, when it's operational, you're picking up cell phones and any, any other kind of telephone. Yeah. Right? You're hooking into some other like internet service provider. It's called backhaul. So like, you know, if you use Comcast or somebody else at home, like that's helping you to get that connection back to internet core. But otherwise once that thing is set up and live, um, yeah, I mean, as long as you're kind of selected by one of the carriers for offload, like you're just going to be helping to pass data through and mm -hmm. earning for providing that, you know, wireless infrastructure. And you used a great um, acronym, uh, DPEN, 
Yeah. Explain what that is. Yep. Um, we there was so many. There was like proof of physical work was one. We were trying to incept crypto too. We were calling them helium inspired token networks. That didn't really stick. Um, so deep in it, you know, so um, decentralized physical infrastructure networks. Um, so wireless is not the only one that has this problem around constrained networks, yeah. uh, energy, compute, um, data storage. storage. The idea that you can leverage these existing like. You know, yep. these new protocols that are helping to kind of uh, solve for the, you not know, just the capital side of it, but just the, the volume and constraints that they're seeing. So, again, like you look at the applications around AI, well, that geographic dependency on I need the content network in a certain place, I need the wireless connectivity, being able to leverage an incentivized network makes it very, very, very powerful to scale. Do either of you have a feel for how much? This deep in is, uh, it's, to me, it's a very important part of legislation. Is, yeah. Do you have a feel for whether there's enough people that understand it, that it will be a key part of the We've, I mean, at least in the market structure and policy side too. We're, we've been spending a lot of time down there educating and it's still, it's a little frustrating of sometimes we'll go and we'll talk about what we're doing mm -hmm. and it's, again, it's, it's Bitcoin and everything else, or it's all financial applications and trading and exchange. Yeah. Um, That's kind of what I asked. There are certain offices that like they, I mean, Lummis knows us very, very well. Um, Taurus in New York knows us very well. I mean, there's a lot of offices mm -hmm. that like, they understand it, they've leaned in, they they have the comprehension on, you guys are doing something that's fundamentally different from like a payment solution. Yeah. Um, but how much tension that gets around the market structure, Bill, not enough. Yeah. I think that's the, the phrase deep in, if it catches on, can, yeah. it can categorize us because there really is something to physical infrastructure that is different from everything that people think about. Yeah. Right, it's not DeFi. It's very different than that. Yeah, yeah. well. Thank you so much, Scott. Yeah, good really luck. Interesting. Good luck. <laughs> yes, good luck with everything. Thank you. Have a good rest of your day. And you. <laughs> We're proud to be sponsored by Foundation. They've created Passport, one of the top-rated Bitcoin hardware wallets, proudly made in the USA. It's fully open source and air-gapped, meaning your Bitcoin stays completely offline and secure. The shocking Bybit exchange hack shows why holding some Bitcoin offline diversifies risk. Now they're launching Passport Prime, your all-in-one solution for not only Bitcoin, but all passwords and 2FA security. Head to foundation.xyz to secure your digital future. Hey, if you like this clip, please hit the subscribe button. You might also want to check out some of the clips I've posted with my many other guests. My interviews all address the simple question, how screwed are we? We ask experts about the problems that make Americans so pessimistic today. But we also explore why there's never been a better time to have been born than today. Join us for perspective on today's challenges and opportunities.